We are open for business and free agency. Nubias Wilborn from Sporting News is here with us to talk Hawks free agents. The biggest one we have to talk about is Paul Millsap. What's going on with Millsap? What's the latest? Well, I mean, Fred, he's been taking a lot of meetings, right? Yeah. Meetings with Philadelphia, meetings with Minnesota, meetings with Phoenix. From what I've heard, he's been talking to Denver lately. So we're still waiting, anxiously anticipating to see what he gets offered contract-wise. It appears the Hawks are only going to go to a certain limit. But there's teams out there, like I said, like the Tenor Wolves, like Philadelphia, like some of these other squads, like Phoenix, who are looking at Paul Millsap. So I wouldn't be surprised if he goes. It's going to be a tough choice. We will find out in the next couple of days. Because the Hawks are allowed to exceed the cap to pay him, could we see a sign and trade deal with Millsap where the Hawks actually get something in return? Well, that's what you would hope to happen, Fred. You would hope the Hawks find a way to get something from this guy. Because, I mean, look, when you got a player like Paul Millsap, who's one of the top 20 players in the league, one of the top power forwards, you want to get something from him. You don't want a return of Al Horford where you didn't get anything from him. Or Joe Johnson, we didn't get anything for him. Well, it's become a reoccurring thing with the Hawks. So maybe you can do a sign and trade, but they're going to have to get creative. And that's where Travis Slink, the new GM, comes in. Now, we've got a restricted free agent in Tim Hardaway Jr. You've got to address that order of business, too. Well, yeah, and that's, again, that's the thing, Fred, where we'll see what he gets offered and who offers what and how much they're going to charge for Tim Hardaway Jr. services. The Hawks can match. I think they will match if it's a reasonable offer. But if a guy like Kent Bazemore got, what, 17, 18 million, why wouldn't THJ look at 18 or 19, maybe even 20 million dollars a year? Now, let me ask you this. This is a great NBA town. Why don't free agents want to come to Atlanta? Well, Fred, guys want to play here in the offseason. They want to play. They want to have fun. <laughs> I got you. But they don't want to necessarily work here. The question is, are the Hawks with Travis Slink, with Mr. Tony Resler, with that new pretty arena that's going to be coming along soon, with all those renovations, barbershops, you know, bars on the court side, will that be a place that will attract fans? Oh, and that new, you know, expensive workout facility that's going to be down at Emory. Will those be the kind of things that will attract players? And that's what we got to find out, Fred, because I don't know yet. That's what I wanted to ask. I mean, because the arena, they're redoing that whole thing. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. Oh, yeah. You know, they've got the new facilities. They've got all those things. What else can they do to bring guys here? Well, I mean, win, Fred. Yeah. Win. I guess, well, Which is, it, it becomes a conundrum. But look, Golden State went through this, right? For 30 years, they were a laughingstock franchise in the NBA. You know what happened? They drafted a guy named Steph Curry. You know what happened after that? They drafted a guy named Draymond Green. And they drafted Klay Thompson. And they picked up Andrew Bogut. All of a sudden, they became good. All it takes is getting good players. The Hawks have to find a once-in-a-lifetime star, maybe like the Cavs did with LeBron James. Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> right. Sounds I'm just easy. saying it ain't Come easy. On, man. It sounds easy, but it's that's not what, easy. That's what, but that's what has to happen because the NBA always has been and always will be a player's league. This is not a parody league. This is not the NFL, guys. The best players on the best teams win. So some of it's going to be luck, some of it's going to be good fortune, and some of it's going to be Tony Resler, the owner, opening up that wallet and getting somebody in here. Okay, now we talked about Steph Curry briefly. I want to ask you about this. His new deal, five years, $200, $200 million. Million. Woo. That's a lot of money, Fred. Yeah. I mean, hey, look, that's Ric Flair. That's style of the profile kind of money, right? But, I mean, honestly, here's the crazy thing. Some say he's still underpaid because there is a salary cap, because there is a luxury tax. And if there's one thing that will break up the Warriors, it will be at one point for them to keep everybody together over the next couple years, they will have to go one billion with a B dollars over the cap. And I don't know as much money as Lakeup has. I don't know if he's willing to go that far. But, you know, stranger things happen. We'll see. You said a billion over the cap? One billion. The over way the, the cap. Over the cap. That's the way the new luxury taxes and all that stuff will work. Um, there's a really great article on SportingNews.com. By the way, that really kind of explains how this thing will work. So, yeah, they're going to have to spend a lot of money to keep that thing together. But, hey, look, Steph Curry, one of the best players in the league, still young, still healthy. He has shown that he deserves every penny, if not more, really, to be honest with you. Okay, so what's going to happen with the Hawks? What do you think is going to happen? We've asked your opinion on different things. Right. What do you think is going to happen now? Freddie, that's a tough question, man, because I still don't know. What I would think would happen is the Hawks have to make a tough decision on Millsap I think they're going to let Millsap go. He's going to get a lot more money somewhere else. Now you're going to start the rebuild, led by Dennis Schroeder, led by Torian Prince. Can this Dorsey kid play? Can John Collins, who they just signed as a 19th pick in the first round, play? If those guys can play, they can come together. The Hawks still may be good. Plus, it's the Eastern Conference. 
Out of the 15 top players in the league, only one is in the Eastern Conference, and that is LeBron James. Everybody else is out west now, because remember, Paul George is gone from the Pacers. So is our old friend Jeff T. Yeah. He's now gone from the Pacers. So you look at all those teams in the, in the east, other than the Boston Celtics, we'll see what Miami does if they get Gordon Hayward from Utah. There's not really a lot of good teams in the Eastern Conference right now, so why couldn't the Hawks, even without Paul Millsap, Freddie, still be a team that you look at and are like, okay, these guys can actually have a way to still make the playoffs and not spend a lot of money, and that will allow them to build and go forward. He's got the NBA covered. Tobias Wilborn of the Sporting News. Thanks for being on with us. Hey, thanks for having me, Fred. All right.